Eye Equip is a mod that lets you change your weapons, your spells, and your powers on the fly without actually needing to go through the menu system. It lets you recharge your weapon without going to the menu. It allows you to even do things like poison a weapon without going through the menu system. It lets you drink potions or eat food. It lets you throw poisons. It lets you drop torches and much, much more more. In fact, it has so many features, it can seem a little overwhelming at first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow it right down and start right at the beginning with the basics. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 106 of the Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. When you first load into game after installing iEquip, you won't actually notice any changes, but you should, after a few seconds, get a new mod configuration menu called iEquip. Don't worry if it hasn't appeared immediately, give it a few seconds. Sometimes it can take a little while. Once it does appear, click on iEquip and go to General and Hotkeys, and at the top where it says iEquip on off, just click there leave the menu and give the game a few seconds to initialize everything. Once it's done, you'll see a message in the top left corner. You can immediately see the heads up display elements and you will receive a giant pop-up window with some information that I do encourage you to read. Now that the mod is actually running, let's familiarize ourselves with the heads up display elements. I'm going to look at the sky so that it's a little clearer. Right at the top, you can see the symbol for powers with horse whistle written above it. That is actually the power horse whistle provided by a mod called Convenient Horses, and as you can see, is indeed the power I am currently ready to use. If I actually change this to a shout, for example, the icon will change to the shout icon and say whirlwind sprint above it. Below that, you can see the alteration icon with telekinesis below it and a dagger icon with the blade of woe written beneath it. And those are, of course, the things that I'm currently wielding. Spell in one hand, weapon in the other. Below that, you can see the symbol for a potion and a symbol for a poison. I'm going to talk more about those later on. I want to really, for now, focus on the power and the items that I'm wielding. In fact, to help focus on that, I'm going to go back to the mod configuration menu for iEquip, go along to the general section, and I'm going to disable the consumables slot and the poison slot. So we can now focus on the powers, spells, and items we've got equipped. The next thing to do is make sure we've got hotkeys set up and you do that from the mod configuration menu once again under the section general and hot keys. Now the default keys might work for you, but I'm going to change the key for the left hand, the right hand, and for the shouts. Obviously, you're going to set these to something that's convenient to you. And what this will let me do is press those keys to rotate between different powers, spells, and weapons that are in those slots. So, for example, if I press the left-hand key, I'll take my hands out so you can see this, if I press the left-hand key, you will see telekinesis changes to unarmed. And after a second, I switch to unarmed. If I press it again, telekinesis reappears, and now the spell is taken out. By default, the only things that are in the queue for the left hand are the spell or weapon that was in that hand when I installed the mod and unarmed. If I press the right hand hotkey, it will change the right hand to unarmed. Now this actually goes unarmed in both hands, so if you want to have a punch up, it's pretty easy to do. If I press it again, it goes back to the blade of woe and then selects it. For the horse whistle, well, if I press the shout power hotkey, nothing is happening. And the reason for that is the only thing that's been added to the queue is horse whistle, the power provided by convenient horses, so there's nothing to change. If I want to actually make this mod more useful, I'm going to need to add 
powers, spells and weapons to the queues. So how do you add items to the queues? Well, it's actually really easy. If I just go along to my inventory, I will actually get a pop-up the first time I open it after installing the mod telling me how to do it. And all I need to do is go along to whatever I want to add to the queue, let's say Merun's Razor, and then press the hotkey I've set up for the hand I want to add it to. So I'm going to add Merun's Razor to my right hand queue. I press the button, it asks me if I want to do it. I say yes, and then I'm going to do the same with Red Eagle's Bane as well. Why not? So I've added two more items to that queue. If I now leave the menu and now press the right hand hotkey, Merun's Razor is now an option. Press it again. I've got Red Eagle's Bane. And yet again to go to unarmed, or if I press it again, go back to the Blade of Woe. To add items to my left hand, I just hover over the item and press the left hand hot key. That's probably pretty obvious. And I'm going to add a few spells. I will add, say, the healing spell. Again, the left hand hot key in this case. And I will add, say, detect life. I've now added a couple of spells to my left hand queue. If I press the left hand queue, I've now got the pickaxe or healing or detect life. Let's go with detect life. And you do the exact same thing for shouts and powers, except obviously you press the shout hotkey instead. And um, I will pick shadow cloak of nocturnal as well. If you accidentally press the wrong button, I'm going to select a shout whirlwind sprint and I'm going to press the right hand Q button it will actually tell me it's the wrong type so don't worry you can't get it wrong I now have the option to go from horse whistle to unrelenting force or shadow cloak of nocturnal for example now you can set I equip to auto add items if you go along to the mod configuration menu adding item section there is um, a subsection called auto add options that lets you auto add hand items, shouts or powers when you equip them. So all you need to do is equip a spell or a weapon and it will actually be added to the queue. I personally prefer to add them manually, but you know, the option is there for you. Obviously, you're going to want to be able to remove things from the queue and occasionally reorder the queue. And you can do that from the utility menu by pressing the utility hotkey. And the default is the K key, but you can change it to whatever you want to from the mod configuration menu under general and hotkeys over here where it says utility hotkey. I'm going to change it to something a little more convenient for me. Once in game, I press the utility hotkey and a pop-up menu appears. I select manage queues and now I have access to all of the queues. I'm going to go along to the right hand queue and you can see I've got five things there. I'm going to remove Merun's razor by either pressing R or just clicking where it says remove from the queue and it's done. It's that simple. I can reorder things by moving them up and down. I can even clear the queue so it completely removes everything and then when I'm done, just go back to menu and I can do the exact same for every other queue. Once I'm finished, I hit exit. And now, Merun's Razor is no longer in the queue. One question that you might have is, can you use iEquip alongside the traditional hotkeys? You know, the ones you set up from your favorites menu. So, for example, I've got Merun's Razor set to equip if I press 1. Invisibility um, set to equip if I press 7, etc. And the answer is, yes, you can. I'm going to press 1 now. There's Merun's Razor. I'm going to press 7. There is invisibility, and you've probably already noticed that the iEquip heads-up display icons are displaying those items and spells. And the same is true for the shouts and powers. I have five set to whirlwind sprint, and there you go. It's, uh, it's no problem mixing these two systems. In fact, 
I highly recommend you use both, and for different reasons. One thing I will point out is equipping these items does not add them to the queue unless you set that in the mod configuration menu. I don't do that because I personally prefer it not to. So now if I press the right hand hotkey, it's rotating through all the items I've got in my queue and none of them is Merun's razor. At this point, you've got a fairly good idea of how to set iEquip up. But what advice would I give you on using iEquip? Which spells and items would I add to iEquip's queues and which would I leave to the traditional hotkey system? Well, my basic advice is if you have something that you need to be able to select very, very quickly and under stressful circumstances, use the hotkey. If there is a weapon that you absolutely need to be able to, you know, draw quickly, or perhaps a shield, or a ward, or in my case, invisibility. I use invisibility a lot. Have a hotkey set up. Same is true for powers. Whirlwind Sprint is a, a, a shout I use to escape an awful lot. I want to be able to press a key and have it change instantly. The hotkeys are very fast. They're absolutely you know, instantaneous. You press the button and that's it. The things that I would add to iEquip's cues are the items and spells that I use fairly frequently, but not necessarily in an emergency. The sort of things that you might add to your favorites menu and find yourself selecting quite often, but not in the middle of a fight. So for me, it's things like telekinesis, perhaps detect life, dark vision. That is my night vision spell. It's the sort of thing I select quite often, but never in the middle of a fight. So that's the perfect candidate to add to eye equip. One thing I would advise against is adding absolutely everything you might ever use to these cues. You, you don't want too many things in these queues because they can become a little hard to manage. If you look at your spell list and add, you know, 20 different spells, it's going to make cycling through them a little problematic. You can't cycle through too quickly because of the limitations of the Skyrim scripting engine. And if you start getting a little you know, frustrated and tapping a little quickly, you might accidentally double tap, which will do something different. There is extra functionality when double tapping some of these hotkeys. I'll talk about that later on. You can tweak how the cycling behaves in the mod configuration menu. So for example, you can turn off the queue position indicators. That's the, um, that is the bar below the icon that appears when rotating. You can turn that off and it will improve the performance a little. And you can even turn off the attribute icons. I'm going to disable the queue position indicator. You can turn off the attribute icons if you want. That might improve performance. But honestly, I like those attribute icons. Um, and... This will mean you don't get the, the little bar underneath. I actually don't think that's particularly useful. I suppose it would depend on how many things you have. You can change the way the cycling behaves. So instead of waiting, instead of waiting a little before equipping, it just equips the instant you rotate. The problem with that is whilst it might seem a little snappier at times. You end up equipping absolutely everything, so it slows things down quite a lot. I would recommend you generally keep the delay, the pause, and if you want to speed it up, you can, but there are limits. Again, if you make it too fast, you might find yourself equipping things even when you didn't want to because you're rotating and then the script will end up lagging. So you'll end up not equipping what you want to equip. It is actually probably better to go in the opposite direction, increase the delay so that you've got time to think about it. I'm gonna put it on two seconds. And this gives you time to rotate through nicely and say, yeah, you know what? 
I want Red Eagle's Bane, and then pause a second and it will select it. As I've said, I equip seems better set up for the sort of things that you use frequently, but not in an emergency. It will allow you to have loads of convenient little tools at your disposal and free up spaces for those critical essentials that need to be hotkeyed. Now, iEquip does have some features that allow you to equip things like a shield or a ranged weapon very quickly in an emergency, but I'm going to talk about those a little later on. Another nice little feature that comes with iEquip that you may want to experiment with is the dual wielding spell functionality. Basically, if you have a spell in one hand and you double tap the hand hotkey for that hand, you will dual wield the spell. So for example, I have the invisibility spell in my left hand, and if I double tap, double press the left hand hotkey, it dual wields invisibility. And that's without me having to add invisibility to the right hand queue. In fact, I don't even have invisibility added to the queue. And this works from the right hand as well. So I've got Summon Inigo, a spell from the Inigo mod. In my right hand, I'm going to double tap the right hand hotkey. And I'm now dual wielding it. You can also enable automatic dual wielding if you go to the mod configuration menu, select equipping, and then go and enable dual equipping spells. What this does is it allows you to choose a school of spells, let's say alteration, and make it so that if you wield the spell in one hand, it will automatically enable it in the other hand, but not for these other schools. So for example, illusion spells, if I select it like this, the illusion spells will only dual wield when I double tap. So let me show you that. So if I now select Dark Vision, that's an illusion spell. It is not dual wield. If I, uh, if I want to dual wield it, I have to double tap. There you go. However, if I select Telekinesis, which is an alteration spell, it automatically dual wields. And you can further customize that by making it so that it will only dual wield spells from these schools if you have the spell in both queues. So I could have some alteration spells in both hands and some alterations only in one hand and it would only dual wield the ones in both. This will just make it a little easier if there is one particular spell that you always want to dual wield but you prefer single wield for the rest. This gives you a lot of control over that. So we should now be comfortable with the three cues we've been discussing so far. It's time to bring back the potion and consumables queue, and we do that by going back to the mod configuration menu, I equip, general and hotkeys, and enable the consumable slot. I'm also going to change the consumable poison hotkey to be something a little more convenient for myself. Obviously, you need to choose something that works for you. Now, I get a new queue below the left-hand queue called, well, that currently has health potions selected. If I press my consumables hotkey one time, it rotates to magicka potions, then to stamina potions, and then onto all the other consumables, whether they be bits of food or other potions. And once I've found something I would like to eat, I simply press and hold the same hotkey and it will eat. The same is true for any potions that um, are not in the main three groups. I'll talk about those in a second. So for example, if I find Ice Wraith Essence and now I press and hold the hotkey, I drink that potion. By default, this mod adds all of the potions and food and drink that you have and pick up to the queue. You can disable that so that you have to add them yourself and then manage the queue the exact same way as you would manage all the other queues. I prefer to do it that way because I actually carry a lot of potions and a lot of food and I can manage it the exact same way. Press the utility hotkey, hit manage queues and then manage 
consumables. And I'm probably going to just, well, remove most of these, actually. And, of course, I can add them the exact same way. Go to the inventory, find perhaps I want my potion of resist frost to be added back. Press the consumable hotkey and add it to the queue. Now, if I go back into game and I press the consumable key, it takes me to health potions, magicka potions, stamina potions, and my potion of resist frost. And that's it. The first three entries on this queue, the health potions, the magicka potions, and the stamina potions, are actually all groups of potions. And if I say select the health potions and then press and hold the consume key, it actually opens another menu, and if I continue to press the consumable key, it rotates between them all. Once I've decided what I want to take, I'm going to take the regenerate. I hold and press. I've now taken a regenerate potion. It's also a potion that gives me thermal vision. That's from another mod. Don't worry about it. You don't always get to see multi-effects on the potions from this menu. But I am now regenerating as well. I have got regenerate health from that potion. It works the exact same way for Magicka and Stamina. I hold and press and then I can rotate through, pick the one that I want. I'm going to do regenerate Stamina again. I have to press and hold. And I'm now regenerating stamina. I'm also uh, able to carry more because that potion fortifies carry weight as well. If you want to disable that functionality and have all of the potions listed individually, just go along to the mod configuration menu, go to potions and quick restore and deselect enable potion grouping. You can then go back Oh, it will then give you the option to add all of the individual potions to the consumable queue if you want. I'm going to say no, because I'm going to do that manually. I'm going to go to my inventory and say, right, I want that one. Press the consumables key and add it to the queue manually. Poisons. Let's add the poisons queue back now. Going back to the mod configuration menu, I equip... General and hotkeys enable the poison slot. You don't need to add a hotkey because it's the exact same as the consumable hotkey. I now have a poisons queue. And to rotate through the poisons queue, what I do is I double tap the consumable key. So if I double tap it, it changes to poison. Double tap it again. Poison of damage health. Double tap, etc. Poison of Frenzy. It's the exact same key. If I single press that key, it flicks over to Magicka Potions, etc. I double tap it and it changes the poisons. It should be noted, however, if you want the poison queue but not the consumables queue and you disable it in the mod configuration menu, which you can do, you can allow poisons but disable consumables. The behavior for the hotkey now goes back to a single press for poison. So if I press the consumables hotkey a single time, it now rotates through the poisons. I only need to double click if I have both consumables and the poison queue. But how do we use the poison? Well, it's pretty easy. You remember how if we double tapped on the left hand or the right hand hotkey when it was containing a spell, we would dual wield the spell? Well, if we double tap the left or right hotkey when it's holding a weapon, it will apply the current poison. So if I now double tap the right hand hotkey, I will have the option to apply the current poison to that weapon. As you can see, I've got 11 charges. If you're curious about that, that's because I'm using the Ordinator perk mod and I am a master alchemist. If I try to apply the poison to my fist, I will get a message telling me I don't have a weapon ready to poison. If you don't like the confirmation message, you can actually go along to the mod configuration menu under using poisons and switch the confirmation message 
off if you select don't show or top up and switch. This will make it so that the message only appears if you've already got a poison on that weapon. So right now, if I double tap the right hand hotkey that and my right hand contains Merun's razor, it simply poisons the weapon because it had no poison. In my left hand, I have the Blade of Woe that already has a poison, and I'm going to double tap the left hand hotkey. And now I will actually get a message warning me that I am replacing an existing poison, giving me the option to say, no, that was a bit of a mistake. So that is the basics of I Equip. And yes, it is only the basics. There are still lots of little features, lots of extra advanced functionality I need to discuss. But before we do that, let's talk about the heads up display. The icons you're looking at, they are useful, but perhaps they're not in the best place for you. Perhaps they're not spaced out well, or maybe they're just a little difficult to look at under certain circumstances. Luckily, you can actually customize this, and you do so using the utility hotkey we set to manage the queues. If you press that and go to enter edit mode instead, the heads-up display will disappear, and then you will get this new menu. Now, it's, it looks pretty intimidating and complicated because there are lots of options. There are lots of key presses and lots of things you can tweak. I am not even going to cover any of that because it, it, it would take too long. What I'm going to show you is how to change the presets because there are lots of presets you can try out and find one that works for you better. Now. The default key to select presets is the number pad 5 key. So I'm going to press that now. If you don't have a number pad, don't worry, you can edit the keys for this in the mod configuration menu. Right, so the this um, pop-up window appears and you can now select a widget preset. And I'm going to start with the Dark Souls preset, clicking on that, and then load preset. It'll take a second. The preset is then loaded and you then have to press the same utility key you press to get into this menu to get out of it. You can see time has slowed down. And there you have it. A new heads-up display widget in the style of Dark Souls. That is actually quite easy to see. But there are plenty of other options. Let's try a few others. This is the diamonds alternative, which is, again, a lot easier to see and pretty cool. Everything works the exact same way, though. Nothing, nothing is fundamentally different. It just looks a little different. Another diamond variant. The Dragonborn variant, which is a lot more minimalistic, if that's the sort of thing you're looking for. And my personal favourite, the Gather Round Right variant, which I think is really nice. It's, it's a good mix between minimalistic and easy to see. I like the radial um, style on the charge meter. I will be showing you that a little later on. And overall, I like this one. There are variants on the diamond theme. There are even variants on this theme where the potions and the... Poisons are underneath the other icons. There's a variant of it on the left and so on. You can try out a variety of these presets and see which works for you. And indeed, if you want to mess around, you can customize it yourself. And again, if you don't have a number pad and you want to do that, go along to iEquip, the mod configuration menu, and you will want edit mode, and you'll want to choose your own hotkeys rather than using the default ones. And in the miscellaneous UI options, you can actually do things like enable the widget fade out, which will essentially hide the widget once it's done its job. You can change the delay. I'm going to make the delay a little faster now so you can see the fading pretty quickly. You can even decide what sort of animation you get and whether or not the widget is visible when weapons are drawn. So maybe you always like to see the widget when you have your weapons out. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want that hidden as well. 
You can enable name fade out. There are quite a lot of options there, but this will mean the heads up display clears up and you will only see these things when you start, say, changing the queue items. When you do that, or if you've got it set, when you have your hands out. Now, I did tell you that this mod had even more features that I needed to tell you about. So we're going to start with a simple one, and that is the recharge weapon feature. A feature that lets you recharge your weapon on the fly without opening the menu. If you look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you will see the widget is showing that I have the Blade of Woe in my hand. If I take the weapon out, you can see the charge meter, the radial um, line running around the dagger icon, shows that I am a little down on the charge. I can fix that and recharge it by simply pressing the right hand hotkey and holding it. It's that easy. It really is that easy. You can do the same for the left hand if you have a weapon in the left hand. And there's not a lot else to tell you about that feature. You can tweak it a little in the mod configuration menu if you like. You can decide what sort of souls it might use, etc. But it really is that simple. Press and hold the hotkey for the hand holding the weapon and you will recharge the weapon. Quick shield. I'm sure you can guess what that does. And to enable it, you just go back to the mod configuration menu and go to equipping and select the enable quick shield option. And what will happen now is if I go back in game and I triple press the left hand hotkey, it will search through my left hand queue and find and equip the first shield or ward that it finds. There you go. Now, I can actually set it so that it will favor either the shield or a ward or it will match whatever I have in my right hand. So, I mean, if I tell it to favor the ward, if I now triple tap the left hand hotkey, it now changes to the steadfast ward. If I had selected match hand, then it will basically check the right hand. And if I've got a weapon equipped, it will give me a shield. And if I've got a spell equipped, it will give me a ward. So I've now got a weapon equipped. I'll triple tap and I get a shield. I'm now going to change to a spell, summon Inigo, and then I'm gonna triple tap again. And this time it changes to a ward. It's worth noting that if you don't have a shield or a ward in your left hand queue, when you activate quick shield, the mod will check your inventory, and if it finds a shield, it will add that to the queue and equip it. It won't do the same for wards, though, even if you've prioritized them. Quick ranged. Once again, pretty self-explanatory. If you go along to the mod configuration menu and find the section labeled ammo and quick ranged, you can enable quick range there, along with choosing your preferred ranged method. So I prefer crossbow, but maybe you prefer bow or a bound weapon or even staves and spells. You can also select give me anything, God damn it, which will just give you the first thing it finds. And you can set things like the switch out options, which I will show you in a second. Once back in game, if I now triple tap the right hand hotkey, it will switch to my crossbow. If I now triple tap it once again, it will switch back to my original loadout. Now you can actually change it so that instead of switching out to whatever you had in your hands, it will switch specifically to a one handed weapon or a two handed weapon, etc. That is completely up to you. Something else worth noticing when we're in the uh, ranged setup is I now have ammo in the left hand queue. If I press the left hand hotkey, it cycles through the various different options I have at my disposal. You will also see a fist icon next to the ammo. That is what I had equipped before I uh, went into quick ranged. If I double tap 
the left hotkey now, it actually cycles through the various things I have in the queue. So I'll leave it at dark vision. What this means is if I now switch to, shall we say, my Blade of Woe, it will equip dark vision. So you can, you can set it up so that when you put your ranged weapon away, it will actually go to a specific thing rather than just back to what you started with. Quick Restore can be enabled under the Potions and Quick Restore section of the Mod Configuration menu. You simply enable it right there. And now, if I triple tap the Consumables hotkey, it will attempt to drink a potion that heals me or for my health, stamina, or magicka. Obviously, I will need to damage those things, so let's start with the health. I'm going to triple tap the Consumables key now. And I take a potion of minor healing, but it will actually heal me of multiple things at once. So I'm going to damage the health again, magicka, and stamina now. Now when I triple tap the key, it will actually drink multiple potions. There you go. You can change a lot of the settings for which potions it will use and when it will apply them in the MCM. So, for example, I could decide I always want it to take the strongest potion I have because, you know, when, when I do this, it's probably because it's an emergency. That way, when I triple tap, I know I'm getting, you know, the best potion I've got. Quick buff. If this is enabled underneath Quick Restore, what it will do is the second time I triple tap the consumable hotkey, if it's within a certain period of time, which is in this case four seconds, instead of trying to restore health, magicka, and stamina, it will attempt to fortify those three things and drink any potions that add regeneration to those three things. So. The first time I triple tap, it will restore those things. The second time I triple tap, if it's within four seconds, fortifies and regenerates them. It will choose potions that have multiple effects as well. So I will damage myself a little just so that you can see it in action. I'm going to triple tap to heal. And then I'm going to triple tap again. This drinks the buffs and I've taken Regenerate Magicka. Fortify Carry Weight, that is a potion that actually fortifies my stamina regeneration as well. I don't have any Magicka buff potions though, so that won't get buffed. This means that in combat I can heal and then quickly take Regenerates and, you know, things that fortify the maximum value for those three things. There is also a quick light feature, which will come as no surprise, and this lets you set a hot key that will pull out a torch um, just at a single press of a key. I'm going to set this to A. You can tell it to prefer magic if that's better for you, or to use magic if you've got no torches left. And you can set it to equip the right hand when you pull the torch out if you want or not. You can also allow it to drop lit torches by double tapping the left hand hotkey and you can even decide what should be done once you've dropped it whether or not you should cycle the hand or go to quick shield etc i'm going to leave it as doing nothing and now if i press the quick light hotkey i'll pull out a torch press it again puts it away you'll also notice there is a little meter showing me how much of the torch is left I'm now going to double tap the left hand hotkey. It will drop the torch on the floor and leave nothing in hand. I can once again press the quick light and it will take out the next torch and so on and so forth. I could select torch. When I've dropped a torch, this will pull out the next torch each time I drop one, which allows me to do amusing things like leave a trail of torches so that I can follow them at a later date. And yes, believe it or not, the mod will actually drink a Magicka potion if you select Magic as your preferred light source and you're too low um, Magicka to cast it. 
There is an auto equip feature that can be enabled under the equipping section of the mod configuration menu and you can set it to auto equip at any time or only when you have weapons drawn or you're in combat. Once you enable it you will get some other options that will dictate when it should uh, auto equip and when it shouldn't and with the default settings what will happen is if I pick this weapon up, it will check the weapons I have in hand, and if it is better than either of them, it will equip it. Of course, I am empty-handed, so it will wield it in the other hand. If I now pick this weapon up, it will replace the axe, because it's much better. If you pick up a shield and you have an empty left hand, you will automatically equip that. But... If you pick up something that is not better than your current weapon and you do have something in your left hand, it will simply go to your inventory, at least with the default setup. You can actually set it to always equip no matter what, but you could specify it should only equip if there is no charge or if it is not poisoned. I'm going to say don't auto equip if my current weapon is poisoned. You can also tell it to drop the current item if you want, uh, although, again, you can protect your favorited items. I'm not 100% sure why you would want to do this. Um, perhaps if you are uh, carrying too much. I mean, that would, that, would, that would never happen, right? I mean, who would end up carrying too much, yeah? And finally, believe it or not, there is a feature that will enable you to equip a poison in your right hand and throw it at a group of enemies, poisoning them all. You enable this in the Using Poison section of the Mod Configuration menu, although you will need the Power of Three's Papyrus Extender mod installed for it to work. Once you've activated it, you set a hotkey for the throwing poisons and you're pretty much done. All you do then is use the consumables hotkey, double tap it to select the poison you want. For example, the poison of frenzy or poison of paralysis. That seems to be a good one. I then press the hotkey for throwing poisons. It will switch to a poison flask. I then throw it and you can see a little cloud. And if I step into the cloud, I'm now paralyzed. And like with everything else in this mod, this feature is extremely customizable. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this video. Now, I've not covered every single aspect of this mod, but hopefully I've covered enough to get you started, to make you feel comfortable enough to use this mod and really get as much out of it as you possibly can. It has a lot to offer. I'm really impressed with, well, the amount of features, but also how customizable they are. This is a very useful mod and will almost certainly be going into my own load order. I can't tell you for sure when the next Skyrim Mod Sanctuary video will be, but of course I would love it if you could join me for that video or any of my other videos if you so choose. I look forward to seeing you there if you do. And until then, remember, as always, have fun. Oh, <laughs>